Good morning, children. Welcome back to online class. In our previous class, I asked you to memorize the sixth unit poem. Hope you have memorized and write in your rough note. Okay. So today, I am giving you the study portion for today's class. You have to learn the paragraph of that poem. You need six poem paragraph. Okay. So learn it well. So today in our class, we are going to start the 7th unit prose. Okay, we have completed 7th unit poem. It's not a memory poem, you know that. So, we are moving to 7th unit prose. Okay, so just we can see that title. The Dying Detective. Interesting title, is it? Do you like... Detective stories. I hope you like. Okay. So here. This lesson. We are going to learn. A detective fiction. Okay. We can first read. One or two lines about the author. Okay. The Dying Detective by Arthur Ignatius Conan Doyle. Okay. So we can see something about the author. Okay. He was born in the year 1859 and died in the year 1930. Okay. He was born in the year 1859 and died in the year 1930. Arthur Conan Doyle. Okay. His full name Arthur Ignatius Conan Doyle. Okay. So, he was famous for his detective fiction featuring the character Sherlock Holmes. Have you heard about Sherlock Holmes? He's a famous detective. Okay. So here in this story also he had written about this famous detective Sherlock Holmes. Okay. He was famous for the detective fiction featuring the character Sherlock Holmes. I already told you, Sherlock Holmes is a famous detective. Doyle wrote 46 stories featuring the character Sherlock Holmes. Okay, so here this story, our story, The Dying Detective, we are going to learn about this Sherlock Holmes, again a detective story. Here the narrator. Narrator of the story is Dr. Watson. He is original a yeah, physician. Okay, he is a doctor. Okay, here the narrator of this story, the dying detective is Dr. Watson. He is originally a yeah, physician. Shall we move to the story? Okay, so here the main characters, let me introduce you one or two characters. When we are reading the story, I will explain about the remaining characters. Sherlock Holmes, okay, the dying detective. Here the dying detective is Sherlock Holmes, okay. And also the story is narrated by Dr. Watson. He's a doctor, he's a physician, okay. Then Mrs. Hudson. Mrs. Hudson is the landlady of Sherlock Holmes. In the Mrs. Hudson's home only, he is staying Sherlock Holmes. She is the landlady. Understand all the character? Sherlock Holmes is a detective. Dr. Watson. Then Mrs. Hudson. She is a landlady. Understand all the characters? Keep these three characters in your mind before getting into the story. Okay, it's an interesting story. At the end of the story, I will ask you certain questions. You have to answer me. Okay, so like I did today, you to find out the reason. Uh, what are the things happening? Listen carefully and you have to answer for my questions. Okay, shall we enter into our lesson? Here, an introduction is given there for this lesson. We can read it that. The detective Sherlock Holmes was seriously ill. He was not just ill. He was seriously ill. Who was seriously ill? Sherlock Holmes. Keep in mind. Ma. He wanted to meet his assistant Watson. Then who is this Watson? Dr. Watson. Assistant of Sherlock Holmes. 
Who is seriously ill? This Sherlock Holmes. And he wanted to meet his assistant, Dr. Watson. Okay. Watson was, sub he asked his landlady to get him. So, Sherlock Holmes asked Mrs. Hudson to go and get him, okay. Inform him about my illness and ask him to come and meet me. Do you get it? You get a connection between the three characters. Sherlock Holmes was seriously ill. And this Dr. Watson was the assistant of Sherlock Holmes. And Mrs. Hudson, landlady. Okay, Sherlock Holmes asked Mrs. Hudson to inform about his illness to Dr. Watson. And ask him to come and meet him. Get it? Then. Watson was surprised to see the condition of his master. So, this Mrs. Hudson informed about the illness of this Sherlock Holmes to Watson. So, Watson reached there and he was very much surprised to see the condition of this Sherlock Holmes because he was seriously ill. Was Watson able to save his master? Okay, that's a question. Okay, in the introduction part. Was Watson able to save his master? Because Watson is a doctor. Okay, whether he was able to save his master. Read on to know more about the underlying story behind Holmes' sickness. Okay, so the other is raising a question to you. Was this Watson was able to save Sherlock Holmes? Or you have to read and find out what is the real reason behind the sickness of Sherlock Holmes. Okay, there is a mystery, is it? So, we can read this story and find out what's the real mystery behind the sickness of Sherlock Holmes. Understand now the situation? Okay, Sherlock Holmes was seriously ill and he asked Mrs. Hudson to go and find out Watson and Watson reached there and he was surprised to see the condition of Sherlock Holmes, whether he was able to save him from that illness and read what is the real reason behind the sickness of Sherlock Holmes. This is what we are going to read in this story. Okay, now we can read. Mrs. Hudson the landlady of Sherlock Holmes came to meet me. Why it said that came to meet me? Who is this me here? Watson. Why? Watson is the narrator of the story. So who is narrating the story? Watson. So he is telling Mrs. Hudson came to meet me. This me is Miss, uh, this Watson, Dr. Watson. And said, Mr. Holmes is dying. What was the information given by this Hudson to Watson? Okay, Mrs. Hudson said, Sherlock Holmes is dying because he was seriously ill. So, she is telling Mr. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, Holmes is dying. Mr. Holmes is dying, Mr. Watson. For three days, he has been singing and I doubt if he will last another day. For three days, continuously he was seriously ill and I am afraid that he will not be alive for one more day. Okay, he is going to die. That is the condition. He would not let me get a doctor. From the first day itself, I am asking, okay, to I will bring a doctor, okay, to cure your sickness. But this what, uh, Sherlock Holmes is not allowing me for doing that. I told him I could not stand it anymore and I would get a doctor. So, Continuous. This is the third day and I said to Mr. Lock Holmes, hereafter I can't stand seeing your condition. I am going anyway, I am going to get a doctor. Okay, so when she said very strictly what Holmes said, he replied, let it be Watson. If you are very particular in calling a doctor, call Mr. Watson. Okay, Mr. Watson is a doctor as well as he is the assistant of Sherlock Holmes. Okay, so Sherlock Holmes said to uh, Mrs. Hudson, if you are very much particular in calling a doctor, you can call Dr. Watson. 
okay so he gave the permission to call dr watson okay after 3 days 3 days continuously he was very ill okay i was horrified for i had not heard about his illness before okay such an illness i had never heard so this doctor was very much afraid who mr watson was very much afraid by hearing his illness i rushed for my hat and coat okay so from watson's home he is now uh, moving towards mrs um, that uh, along with mrs hudson she, uh, he was coming to meet sherlock home so he was wearing his hat and his coat everything and he was getting ready as we drove back i asked her about the details so while they are driving towards mrs mr uh, homes he was was watson was asking all the details to mrs hudson what really happened what was his illness everything he was asking to mrs hudson and whatever she knew mrs hudson whatever she knew everything she is telling to mr watson there is a there is little i can tell you sir i don't know much about that okay only a little i know whatever i knew everything i will inform you there is little i can tell you sir he has been working on a case down at rotherheath near the river and has brought this illness back with him okay he was working on a case why well, he was a detective so he was working on a case and uh, where he was working down at rotherheath near the river that area he was working for a case when he come back from that place he came with this disease okay that's what i knew about that he took to bed on wednesday afternoon wednesday afternoon he was uh, he took to, took to bed on wednesday afternoon and had never moved since from wednesday he was on his bed from wednesday he did not move anywhere he was not able to move anywhere for 3 days neither food nor drink had passed his lips he did not eat anything or drink anything for the past 3 days okay why did you not call a doctor i asked you can call a doctor his condition was seriously ill okay he was in a bad condition why can't you call a doctor he would not have it sir i didn't dare to disobey him he did not allow me to call a doctor i am afraid to disobey his order so only i did not call a doctor then he was indeed a sad sight in the dim light of a foggy november day the sick room was gloomy spot but it was a gaunt face staring from the bed that brought chill to my heart so now mr watson reached mrs hudson home and now he was entering the room of sherlock holmes okay it was a sad sight okay he was going to die okay his eyes had the brightness of fever dies so he was describing the condition of sherlock holmes his eyes had the brightness of fever his cheeks were flushed you know uh, if someone had fever their condition will be in the eyes we can see the fever and cheeks we can understand that so only this mentioned like that his cheeks were flushed and his hand twitched all the time he lay listless okay so he was restless he was not able to lie on the bed too okay or he was not do, uh, able to do anything he did not eat anything for the past 3 days even he did not drink anything so you can imagine the condition what how seriously ill sherlock holmes is okay the okay my dear fellow i cried approaching him okay so when mr watson saw the condition of sherlock holmes he was surprised and also he was not able to tolerate his condition so he was crying see my dear fellow like that he would run towards him i cried approaching him stand back stand right back he cried is this he sherlock holmes okay don't come near to me you stand back there but why i want to help you okay but why should i stand back i am a doctor i want to come near to you okay so i can't stand here certainly watson but it is for your own sake okay 
you you should not come near to me because for you only for your sake i am telling you you stand back okay for my sake i was surprised why you are telling it's for just more for my sake i know that what's the matter with me it is a disease from sumatra it is a deadly and contagious okay why he said it's for his sake because it's a contagious disease it will spread those who come or touch him near to him the disease will spread okay so because of that only sherlock holmes said you should not come near to me because it's a contagious disease watson that's it by touch okay even by touch the disease may spread so you should not come near to me you have to stand back good heavens homes do you think this can stop me i said advancing towards him if it spread also no problem because you are my master this will not stop me from approaching near to you or uh, giving medicine to you okay i should do something for you it can it can't stop me okay and he moved towards him if you will stand there i will talk if you don't you must leave the room so what uh, sherlock holmes got angry and he said if you stop there i will talk to you or else if you want to approach me you have to leave the room at once okay if i want to talk to you you should stand there okay that is the condition laid by sherlock holmes i have always given into home's wishes but now my feeling as a doctor was aroused i was at least his master in the sick room okay every time whatever sherlock holmes is telling watson will obey okay he will, he will not say any word against sherlock holmes okay that was the condition of mr watson always he will obey whatever sherlock holmes is telling because he was his master okay so but here in this point he is thinking that at least in this sick room i am a doctor and he is my patient now so i should not obey him if i obey him he will die now okay so at least in this room i am the master of him because i am a doctor and he is now a patient and i have to cure his disease homes i said you are not yourself whether you like it or not i will examine your symptom and treat you at least this day please uh, listen to me i will examine your condition and i have to uh, see all your symptoms and i have to treat you or else you will die okay that is the condition if i am to have a doctor said he let me at least have someone in whom i have confidence so sherlock holmes got angry he is telling if i really need a doctor i will call another doctor who may have confidence i don't have any confidence in you okay so i will call a good doctor okay like that he said then you have none in me you don't have any confidence in me i am also a doctor i can cure your disease don't you have any confidence on me see in your relationship certainly but facts are facts in your relationship as my friend or as my assistant i have a lot of confidence on you but as a doctor i don't have any confidence in you okay facts are facts you are a general practitioner not a specialist of this disease you are a general doctor okay you can cure a normal disease everything you can cure but this is a contagious disease and this is a special kind of disease and you are not a specialist of this disease so i don't have any confidence if so let me bring sir jaffer uh, meek or penrose fisher these are the specialist for this disease okay so if you have don't if you don't have any confidence i will call any other specialist for you or any other best man in london in london any other specialist you tell them okay so i will go and bring it for bring them for you how ignorant you are watson he said with groan ignorant you don't know anything watson okay like that he is telling 
What do you know about Torpalni fever or Black Formosa plague? Okay, do you know in some names of the disease he is mentioning? Torpalni fever and Black Formosa plague. Do you know anything about this disease? I have never heard of them. So, this man is telling, Watson is telling, I have never heard about such a disease. Okay, there are many problems of the disease in the East. I have learned that much during my recent researches. And during this course, I caught this illness, he said. Okay. There are many problems. There are many problems causing because of this disease. And I have learned that much in the recent researches. I am researching about this disease. And while I am doing that only, I was affected by this disease. I will bring Dr. Ainstree then. I said going towards the door. So he said, if you are not uh, that uh, uh, very much interested in that I am curing your disease, I will call any specialist for you. So he is telling another doctor's name, Dr. Ainstree. He is a specialist. So I said going towards the door. Never have I had such a shock when dying man bolted the door and locked it. So all of a sudden, Sherlock Holmes ran towards the door and locked the door. Okay. And shouted an uncontrolled way. And in a moment, he was back in the bed. Okay. All of a sudden, he just moved towards the door only once. Before that, Sherlock Holmes ran towards the door and locked the door. And again, he was back on the bed. You won't have the key by force from me, Watson. Be here till 6 o'clock. It was 4 now. Now, the time is 4 o'clock. You have to be here in this room till 6 o'clock. Okay. After that only I will give the key. You can open the door. This is madness home. I said. Are you mad? Whether I have to sit here simply for 2 hours? Only 2 hours Watson. Then you can get a doctor of my choice. After 2 hours I will tell a doctor. Okay. About a doctor. You have to call that doctor. You can read some books over there. At 6 we will talk again. Okay. So this 2 hours you can spend uh, very usefully. The books are there. You can read that. And after 2 hours I will talk to you at 6 o'clock. Unable to settle down to reading. I walk slowly round and round looking at the pictures. He was not patient. How can he sit simply? So what he is doing, he was not able to read the books too. So he just moved around the room, seeing all the pictures, everything. Finally, I came to the mantelpiece, where among other things, I saw a small black and white ivory box with a sliding lid. Okay, so he was watching all the things in the shelf, everything. He was just looking. So, he saw an ivory box which is black and white in color with a sliding lid. He can just open it by sliding it. Okay, so with a sliding lid. As I held it in my hand to examine it, I heard a dreadful cry. Put it down. Okay, so when he took that ivory box, it looked very beautiful. So he just tried to open that. At that time, he heard a dreadful cry. It was from Sherlock Holmes. What did he say? Put it down at once. Down at once. At once you have to put it down. Watson, I hate to have my things touched. These are all my things. You should not touch any things of mine. See, sit down man and let me have my rest. You should not move here and there or don't touch any things of me. You have to sit there simply like that. He shouted and let me have my rest. Then I sat in silent dejection until the stipulated time had passed. So two hours this Watson sat in a place very silently. He was not able to touch any things. Two hours. He had to spend this two hours till six o'clock. He was Sitting there simply, silently. He was not able to touch anything. So, he sat there simply. Okay. So, we will see the remaining part in our next class. Okay. So, what are the study portion I had given you? You have to study that. So, the remaining part of the story we can see in our next class. Thank you children.